Right now at 5.30, a nasty situation for some folks in Lexington overnight. They were forced out of their apartments when raw sewage backed up inside. We'll have more coming up. Also on WKYT this morning, we're tracking a tragic story out of northeastern Kentucky. A young girl apparently accidentally shot and killed. Tensions remain high in Ferguson, Missouri, following a third day of protests since the anniversary of Michael Brown's death. We've got the latest coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Hey, good morning to you and welcome in. It's good to have you along. It's Tuesday, August 11th, the eve of the start of school at Lexington. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope you can take advantage of today, the last day of freedom for a lot of kids yeah. and their parents. Yeah, lots of, in lots of cases. You may be up for another reason, off and ready to go to work today. It's going to be a good day. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris, who's tracking weather. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, it's a pretty good day. I think if the kids are heading back to school today, it's not all that bad trying to sit out by the bus stop and wait on that bus to pull on up. Just one of those feelings you get as you walk out to the bus stop. You're getting ready for school. There's your look outside. Most of this is now south of Pikeville and south of, say, Alice Lloyd College, Hindman, Pippa Passes, Whitesburg. You're going to be in on the mix for the next few hours because this front really isn't moving over the mountainous regions that fast. It's going to take some time. Temperatures are in the 70s. It's not the best feel. That actually comes tomorrow and off into the rest of your work week. But planning out your Tuesday, here's what we're going to do. It's right around 70 degrees this morning. That chance of rain is down toward the southeast. That chance of rain is down toward the southeast. Then we get into early afternoon, and here's what we cannot do today. We can't rule out a passing shower or two. Notice I'm not saying storms today, a passing shower or two, and they'll be very light, if anything at all. So it will not affect your plan. Stick to them. Uh, and looks like most of us will stay dry as we head throughout the day. That's the look at your forecast, guys. We'll talk really about this big shot at that September air coming in just a few minutes. Okay, we'll see you in a bit, and it sounds good with that forecast. Now to a WKYT breaking news alert this morning. Right now, there is a large police scene at two Lexington hotels, and it follows the report of a shooting. WKYT Sean Moody just arrived at the scene on Haggard Court near North Broadway and I-75. Sean, what have you been able to track down at this point? Good morning, Rebecca and Bill. We're still trying to figure out exactly what happened here. This is Haggard Court in between some of the hotels here along North Broadway, out near the interstate. We're not sure exactly what happened yet, but there are several police officers here. You can see several vehicles, seven or eight of them, in between some of the hotels around here. Um, and the police also, or firefighters, emergency crews rather, took someone away in, a, uh, in an ambulance just about 10 minutes ago. We're not sure what happened to that person. Um, officers have been walking around the area here, looking around some of the grassy areas, and also looking through a vehicle here in this parking lot. As soon as we get a chance to approach the police officers and ask them what they're working on out here, we will let you know. Live in Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. We know you will. Thanks so much, Sean. A nasty situation overnight for people inside some Lexington apartments. The apartments had to be evacuated because raw sewage backed up into bathtubs. Crews were called out around 11 o'clock last night to the Fairway Apartments on Pimlico Parkway. Emergency crews tell us two people cannot live in their apartments right now because they're being cleaned. They are now staying with family while the issues worked on. Uh, okay, our time this morning is 5.33 on WKYT, and Lexington police are investigating a shots fired situation. A man told them that people shot at him while he was driving. Police say a man was driving in the Winburton neighborhood around 2 o'clock this morning, headed out to Russell Cave Road, when three people shot at him from another car. Police say they turned onto New Circle Road. That's when the suspect's car rear-ended the other man's car, shot at him again, and drove off. Police say they're looking for a maroon Dodge neon car involved in that incident. We have some new information this morning about a tragic story that we first brought you last night on our 11 o'clock news. A young girl died after an accidental shooting in northeastern Kentucky. WKYT's Mark Barber is our live desk with more on what we know about this so far. Good morning. Good morning, Rebecca. Family members are painting a terribly sad picture of what happened to the 12 year old who police say accidentally shot and killed herself. It has been a very difficult night for those close to the girl. You can see people outside the home leaning on each other for support and putting their hands to their faces as investigators try to figure out what happened at the Catlitzburg home. The girl's 15-year-old brother says his sister was shot around 8.15 last night when they were unpacking their belongings in their new home. According to the CBS affiliate in the area, the girl's grandfather says she was unloading a truck 
when the gun may have caught on a strap and fired. Just heartbreaking details coming out of Eastern Kentucky this morning about the young girl who just started middle school in Boyd County five days ago. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. Very, very sad situation. Thanks so much, Mark. Well, the search for a possible body in the Kentucky River could pick up back up again today. At last check, Lexington police, firefighters, and dive teams hadn't found anything in the river. Police say they are not sure yet if they will continue the search today. Investigators say they received a tip from a third party about a body possibly being in the river. They spent hours searching it near the Valley View Ferry. The ferry was closed all afternoon and last night while police searched yesterday. Later today, a judge is set to decide if a Lexington murder suspect is fit to stand trial. Corey Etherington is accused of killing 87-year-old John Tully last summer at an apartment on Appian Way. More recently, he is also accused of attacking two corrections officers at the jail. The detention center says he pulled one female officer's hair and scratched another officer across the neck. Well, protests in Ferguson, Missouri have now stretched into a third day. This is since the anniversary of Michael Brown's death. You're taking a live look right now at downtown Ferguson. Uh, and while it may look peaceful at the moment, it was anything but calm just a few hours ago, as dozens ended up being arrested when protesters faced off against police. Don Champion with CBS News has more. Police in riot gear moved in on protesters illegally assembled along West Florissant Avenue overnight, where demonstrations were interrupted by gunfire Sunday. Some officers were pelted with bottles as they made arrests, but contained the scene. We are trying to do everything that we can to protect life and property. Hours earlier, dozens of protesters were arrested on what was billed as a national day of civil disobedience. Kayla Reed was among those taken into custody for blocking the entrance to a federal courthouse in St. Louis. There isn't a fear of arrest. We understand that all of this, all of this is necessary toward the goal of creating an accountable police department. A year after the death of Michael Brown, some here believe Ferguson is far from healing. I still get angry even, even when I walk past or ride past where Mike Brown body lay. I get angry every day just to know that the man that did it is still like, he's still out here. He's still living his everyday life. Federal authorities are still working with officials in the city to change practices within its police force. Practices, the Justice Department said, included a pattern of excessive force against minorities. Don Champion, CBS News, Ferguson, Missouri. And the 18-year-old man who was shot by officers in Ferguson Sunday night after he allegedly opened fire on them remains in critical condition this morning. Tyrone Harris is facing a slew of charges, including assault on law enforcement and armed criminal action. His father, though, says he is innocent. News and GOP debate host Megyn Kelly has finally sounded off about the controversial comments made to her by Donald Trump. The 2016 presidential candidate made comments complaining about Kelly's questions that were posed to him during the debate. He says the questions were unfair and, he, and made comments implying that Ke Kelly was hormonal while hosting. While on her show, The Kelly File, last night, Kelly finally responded. I certainly will not apologize for doing good journalism, so I'll continue doing my job without fear or favor. Trump's comments got him uninvited to a key conservative activist gathering over the last weekend. Trump now says Fox News Network's chairman has assured him that the channel will treat him fairly in the future. A dog found abandoned and starving in Jessamine County is doing much better this morning. And now investigators are stepping up their efforts to track down her owner. They say there is evidence the puppy was wearing a collar shortly before she was found. The ASPCA offering a $1,000 reward to the person who provides information, leading to an arrest in the case. The director of public services says he cannot believe how badly the dog has been now malnourished. Terrific. Uh, because an animal to get in that shape, it takes quite a bit of time for it to get that far, uh, especially in this case. Uh, the animal was almost a skeleton when we got it. Well, when arrested, the person responsible for starving that puppy will face a charge of animal cruelty second degree, which is a misdemeanor. A man police say owned seven dogs who attacked a Lincoln County woman now faces even more charges. Danville police charged Christopher Pope with four counts of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. He was already charged with animal cruelty and harboring a vicious animal. The Lincoln County attorney said the dogs involved in the attack were all put down yesterday. 
But a rescue group says another of Pope's dogs named Fiona was also put down, even though she wasn't involved in the attack. The county attorney could not tell us why the dogs were euthanized. Well, we're hearing more from a pilot who walked away when his small plane crashed in Boyle County this last weekend. The Zenith airplane crashed Sunday near U.S. 127 in Boyle County. James Board says he spent six years building the plane and was on his first flight in it. He says he knew something was wrong shortly after takeoff, so he did what he could until the plane hit the ground. I kept trying to keep away from houses and anything, you know, other than open fields, so it led me to here. Board says he couldn't land on the highway because there was simply too much traffic, but he ended up in some cherry trees while trying to make a nearby field. Board walked away from the crash with only some minor injuries. The FAA is trying to figure out exactly what caused the crash. And, but it looks like he's all right. Yeah, and uh, it's sometimes yeah. not that situation, that outcome in that yeah, situation. Right. 541 is our time this morning, and let's check live drive traffic on your Tuesday, the day before school begins in Fayette County. Yeah, taking a look at the Waze app, we're not seeing too much. Our roadways look clear. No hazards to slow you down this morning. Stay safe on your morning commute. All right, make it a good one. That uh, traffic pattern will change significantly yeah. tomorrow. Good to have you along on WKYT this morning, and we have a lot more news coming right up. We ever wanted to raise chickens without the commitment. In California, now you can. We'll tell you how in five minutes. And we're looking outside seeing a couple of showers down toward the southeast. It's mostly dry today, but mostly being the key word. We can't say fully dry. I'll explain that forecast and show you this nice air moving on in. Coming up next.